our celebrations of life, we sometimes read a piece by George O'Dell, which ends with, all our lives we are in need and others are in need of us. This is a Unitarian Universalist understanding of human relations, that we are interdependent creatures who need one another. This, today in this month's wellness service, we're exploring collective well-being, how our own well-being is intrinsically linked to the health of the collective. And if I stop and think about this at all, I know this is true. My child is struggling, I worry why I despair over climate change. And it's why we help Syrians relocate to Canada, because we feel the suffering of those around us. We are interconnected. And so the wellness of the groups we belong to, including UCM, has an impact on our own well-being. Yale researchers have found four domains that indicate that a group is working well, indicators of health. Vitality, a sense of optimism and hope is important. Our collective vitality, the flaming flare of life here, despite sometimes flickering, it is strong. The future is filled with so many possibilities as we move into a time of renewal. Good things are coming. The second indicator is that people feel connected and supported by the group. People need to feel truly welcome just as they are. And as Sheila pointed out, we have our caring circle and our membership committee who work hard to nurture and care for our connections with one another. A third is contributions, that many people are engaged and involved because that promotes wellness. In a spiritual community like this one, it's created always by the engagement and presence of all of you, whether that's showing up for a service or sitting on the board. And finally, inspiration. It's about people finding meaning and purpose within the group, being mentally and emotionally fulfilled by the collective's purpose. And this is a key function of a spiritual organization. This should be a place of inspiration and meaning for all of us. And so this chalice community is a place of collective well-being. We possess vitality, connection, contributions, and inspiration. We have what we need to thrive. That's the good news. The bad news is that this is not a goal to be achieved. Collective well-being is a continuous organic process. Any group needs ongoing care, extra water here, a little pruning there, to be healthy and grow. In our systems, it's why we have processes and policies because they're there to help support and uphold our collective well-being, help everyone know how we can work together and who's responsible for what. And it's why we have the covenant that we just read to help us navigate that reality of people working together. As I'm sure as you all know, being part of a group can be a frustrating experience. Your neighborhood hockey parent team parents group, your running club, your knitting people, it might include people that you struggle with, personalities clash, demands on your time can be high, and the schedule is often out of your control. People do things that you would not do. And joining a spiritual community can be even harder, as there can sometimes be a perception that we are enlightened beings who are in perfect harmony, a gaggle of Jesus's. <laughs> now, I cannot turn water into wine, but I can say with full confidence that I will fail and miss up, and I have done so over the years, because we're all flawed, happy, troubled, afraid, sad, awkward, fabulous humans. No different here than at the office or the gym. We ask you to show up with your full selves, and that includes all the difficult and so that's why we have this covenant, to remind ourselves how we want to be together, how we want to take care of each other, how to repair things when we inevitably fail. It's our guide to our collective well-being. If the collective isn't a place, but the people. It's our relationships, our connections that create the whole together. 
My American colleague Cheryl Walker notes that in a spiritual place, a community doesn't happen unless everyone is willing to give up some of their identity as an individual, take on the identity of a group. And Cheryl says that doesn't mean going to the extremes of the same clothing or praying the same or believing the same in our case, but it does mean focus, moving the focus from the individual to that concept of shared community in which everyone gives up a little so that we can all gain a lot. And thinking as a collective can be a struggle for free thinking independent Unitarian Universalists who are often coming in opposition to other religious dogma and creeds, traditions that have been painful and traumatic. And it can be easy to forget that this is a we space, not a me space. That what we want might not be what the whole needs. For a group to be successful, we all have to give up a little of me and my way for all of us to gain even more. And we have to work hard, particularly at this time, to ensure that our system doesn't work in the same old white privilege, white culture way, so that we can live up to our values of inclusion and care to our eighth principle. So that people with marginalized identities don't have to leave their poor selves behind when they enter our doors. So it takes effort and intention to create healthy systems that are welcoming to all that allow new ways of doing and being. And it can be a frustrating and challenging process. But I have faith that we are making these shifts, that we're entering a period of renewal, and that even as we fail, we will repair and keep trying. Because Unitarian Universalism matters. Even as old notions of how to do religion fall apart, the values of our faith, interdependence, love, justice, they are as needed now as ever. We are better together. One of my favorite shows is The Good Place. It's a TV sitcom that explores what it means to be a good person in the afterlife. In the show, four people have died, and the story explores what it means to get into the good place and what happens when you end up in the bad place. The good place includes yogurt that tastes like that feeling you get when your phone is fully charged. The bad place includes bears with chainsaws. <laughs> now I was re-watching a couple of the episodes this week and I realized that one of the reasons I love this show is that it is basically a four season argument for universal. In the good place, everyone has the potential to get into heaven. No one is beyond redemption. But it takes work. People have to unlearn bad habits, let go of selfishness, and develop care and compassion for others. And we need other people. As one character says, people improve when they get external love and support. We can't be in this life alone. We all need help to take care of one another, to take care of ourselves, to do better, to unlearn racism, patriarchy, colonialism. We improve when we have consistent love and support from others. And I see this here in the work we've done around truth and reconciliation with Indigenous people, our Green Sanctuary designation, with our eight principal work. None of this work is finished, but we have improved and learned together. And this is a very universalist message, that we can all improve, that we're not fixed, that we can heal and grow. Our spiritual ancestors argued that God was too loving to condemn anyone everlasting hell. And this was in direct contrast to most Christian traditions in the 18th century and was seen as heresy. The thought was that without fear of internal damnation, people would be selfish, immoral, and run amok. But we know that using fear to control people isn't a good way to run society. It's just a nasty way for a small group to hold on to. I see universalism today as less about a loving God and more about loving one another. The love and support of others that keeps encouraging us to go on learning and growing. Universalism is a deep understanding that we are better together, 
that were part of this magnificent, wondrous, mysterious whole. That's why I need Unitarian Universalism. I need a spiritual community that is loving and supporting as I unlearn old ways and learn kinder, more inclusive, more open ways. The Good Place character calls this spanks for the soul. That little extra external spiritual support we all need sometimes. Our individual well-being depends on our collective well-being. American educator Booker T. Washington said, if you want to lift yourself up, lift up someone else. When we help another person do work as a collective, our own spirit feels better. Why we fight against climate change, why we welcome refugees to Canada. And my hope is that UCM, the spiritual collective of flawed and fabulous people, is where you find love and support, where you can be yourself, where you can contribute your gifts and heal and grow. May we see the joy in this great truth. All our lives, we are in need, and others are in need of us. So see we all. Thank you. Thank you.